So you guys should be able to see me in there, right? Red, orange, and yellow guy. Um, we're looking for blue and black. Those are gonna be our colder spots in the frame at that particular moment. So I also have this set up to where there's a blue dot bouncing around the screen, and that is showing us where the exact coldest spot is in the frame at that particular moment, and it'll also have the temperature next to it. I also have like a, a center crosshairs that's a little off center, um, but it kind of shows us like, hey, this is the ambient temperature right now is between 81 and 83 degrees. So that way I kind of have a gauge and I'm looking for those colder spots of like 15 plus degrees in difference of temperature as far as the cold spot goes. So we're going to be recording with this through a pretty good portion of the night. This is a FLIR camera. This is what firemen use to actually help save people. They'll throw one of these on their cell phones and it's a nice easy catch. Um, as great as the hardware is, the software sucks. So Andrew, do you go by Andrew or Andy? Andrew? Okay, so... Well, my, my middle name is Andrew, so it's kind of like, all right, that's easy for me to remember. Um, but um, I'll let you know when we're going to do a few, you know, when we're going to stop the video, because the software, if we record for too long, it'll actually, like, lock everything up. It's, it's kind of, the software is not super great, but the hardware is, which is why we have it. Um, however, I'm going to again, but you're going to pretty much handle this, like, one-handed. You don't want to grab it by the camera, um, but you're going to keep it horizontal all night long. Okay. Yep, you got it. Tammy, let's see how good your listening skills are. I don't hear better than you. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to use a, a couple of different versions of spirit boxes tonight. So spirit boxes are basically a way for us to communicate with the dead. Okay. Um, this is probably where we get most of our information from to be able to verify it and classify it as actual evidence. For your TV shows, normally this would be like the white noise and then your host will tell you what he thinks he heard in the middle of the white noise on the screen trying to convince you of the same thing. We're doing this in real time, and capturing a disembodied voice is a rarity. I only capture about four or five a year. I did just catch one a few nights ago, which was amazing, crystal clear. But I what haven't. What did it say? Um, have the party come in. Oh, okay. Like it was a full sentence over five different radio stations. Like okay. there was no way it was radio chatter. However, I'm going to have you listen for radio chatter. So the song lyrics, DJs, and commercials, I have it slowed down so it's not going super fast to allow the radio chatter to come through. If you hear a commercial, I want to know what the commercial said. Um, the cool thing is, is you're going to have an earbud in. You can, you're going to be the only one to hear it in real time. I'm going to be writing those things down, but it is recording. So I'm going to give you the full recording back tomorrow morning after I spot check it and give you the things that I find on top of writing down what you heard. So again, I don't want your earbuds back, so I buy these in bulk. These are your little souvenir. Um, your volume button is a wheel right here at the top, so kind of undo the twist tie for your earbud, pop one in, and kind of get used to the volume guide. Volume setting on that one. So, and you can, it's the wheel at the top, so just kind of feel for the wheel. That's a button. Don't hit the button, you'll just turn it off. Yep. Sorry. That's okay. Now we got to reset it. It's okay. Yeah, turn it back on, but there's buttons it needs to start recording again. Sorry. Okay. Everybody does it every once in a while. All right, so we're going to start the sweep and start the recording. So, there, right next to the button, on the right-hand side of it, is a wheel. Okay. So, you, you'll control the volume. So the second device you're going to use, you're going to use another type of spirit box to kind of see how things are going to coincide. You don't okay. have to listen to this one. Okay. This one is going to give us words from time to time in the center of the screen. Right now it says the word Sandy. Uh -huh. So that was the last term on my last tour. So again, um, it's going to save all of those words and phrases into a list with timestamps. This kind of helps me with where do I need to listen to the recording? Where do I need to watch the video? Um, I will tell you that this is a phone app. 80% of what comes out of this thing is going to be garbage. It's going to be the 5 to 20% that's going to be relevant to the space of where we are, person we're talking about, one of you guys, yada, yada, you got to get the point. But the word Sandy is not going to be on your word list, but we are going to kind of keep this guy just kind of handy. Even if you have a back pocket you want to shove it in, as long as the face is open, you'll be good to go. We'll just pull it out from time to time. But All right, so your second device, um, and you have pretty deep pockets, like you're wearing cargo shorts like me, so this can be pulled off from time to time too. This is this is an EMF meter, so it is way more accurate than the blinky light ones that they use on TV. They also use these, but they use them for all of the other multifunctions. Um, the main focus that we're gonna be using it is the big numbers. Anything above 2.5, I kinda wanna see what's going on. We'll, we'll debunk it and kinda do things like that. 
Um, it also has ambient temperature, so we can kind of, if you find a cold spot, I'll take it from you and go find where the cold spot's coming from. It's just nice to have it at the ready. It also has a motion sensor on it, but we probably won't use that tonight just because your hands are going to be super busy. So again, even if you want to slide this guy in your pocket, whip it out from time to time. Um, so again, 2.5 and higher on the big numbers. 2.5, that means there's something going on with 2.5 or higher. Well, but we're gonna debunk it first. We're gonna make sure there's no wiring around, that your cell phone wasn't too close, those kind of things. Well, cell phone's so, in my back pocket here, so. <laughs> well, you're not gonna see a 2.5 if it's in your pocket. Okay. We're just gonna pull it out from time to time and kind of gauge things. Yeah. Uh, the device I'm gonna be using, and I'm gonna keep, kind of keep it handy, it's because it's brand new and I'm still testing it out. Uh, this one works with the EMF fields that are basically you're measuring. So what this guy actually does is it's basically a digital Ouija board. So it's gonna have a cursor going all across all the letters. Every time there's any kind of EMF spike, like that one right there is gonna stop on the letter and give us the letter on the right and also add it to the line at the bottom. The hope here is that we're gonna be able to spell things out, get initials, get an anagram. It hasn't given us a whole lot. I've had it about a month now. So again, it's been giving us little clues here and there, but again, this thing is so new to the market that the ghosts don't even know how to use it. It's like I'm training them how to use the damn thing. <laughs> so again, it hasn't given us a ton just yet. I'm gonna turn down the sensitivity because we're still near some electrical poles and that kind of thing. So this one will be in, uh, we'll put it on the outside pocket of this thing. Um, but that should keep us obviously pretty busy with those devices. <laughs> Radio stations, if I hear a commercial, you'll let you know. Commercial, right? song, lyric, DJ, whatever you hear. If you yeah, can wait. make something out, it's a 50 50 shot. We can tie it to the location of where we are. I'm looking for something that's kind of black and blue. Black and blue. And moving. Black and blue, like a person. Right. Okay. Most things that I've caught with that camera have taken shape into a direct person, and the coldest part on that person is wherever their skin might be. So if it's just a face, if it's their arm, if it's something along those lines. So black is the coldest thing, white is the hottest thing. So when it picks it up and it keeps it steady going, will it stop on anything particular or will it keep scanning? It'll keep scanning. Okay, so I'm hearing all kinds of things, but I just need to let it go, right? Oh yeah, just keep it running. Okay. So again, what you're hearing in real time, and you're gonna find out like the, this spot and the next spot are kind of like your training course. Okay. So again, I'm gonna tell you a quick little, you know, ditty about this whole Big John's place and why we're here. And then we're gonna to go to the next space. And you have to remember, I usually have 10 to 11 people here and they all have different devices. Okay. So this is actually, like I said, kind of nice that I only have to explain four different devices on, well, basically five, because I'm using one tonight too. So, but again, you guys are all holding something that one person would do in each hand. Okay. So again, I'm, I'm putting some work to you guys. <laughs> so, okay. um, so Big John's, there's a reason why we're here, like I said. This place used to be owned by a football player. His name was Big John Kennedy. He played for the 1947 New York Giants. So yeah. whenever I give you the history of a building, I'm gonna always slow down on keywords that I commonly find on spirit boxes. You're holding two spirit boxes right now, so they're mainly for you. 47 New York Giants and anything relative to a bar, the name John. Those are kind of the keywords around here that we commonly hear. Okay. But here's why the place is haunted. John used to sit in the back of the bar, and he would tell the bartender if the cadets that were coming over from the Citadel, if they were old enough to drink or not. One night, two guys came in. They weren't old enough to drink, so he had the bartender throw them out. They left pretty angry. They came back the next night, and they tried to steal the cash register from the front of the bar. Uh. John saw what was going on, because he's sitting in the back. He slams down his beer, and he goes over and just starts beating the hell out of these guys, just pounding them into the floor. A couple of gunshots went off. John got grazed in the neck, and the bullet landed behind him in the wall. John, being the only one that's been shot, gets up, goes back to the bar, tells the bartender to get him another beer, get the two guys on the floor, and ambulance. Now, normally if I tell you that a building is haunted, you automatically think of some kind of tragic death. That's not the case here. What's going on is the bullet hole. It's allegedly still here. Even if this new renovation of Big John's filled it in, the, they basically sealed Big John's blood inside the wall. Right. So people that sit in the front of this bar tend to get a little queasy, nauseous, or headache. It's part of the reason why I start here. It's kind of a heated warning. During our time together, if anybody feels any of those things, I need to know we're going to blame the heat and humidity first, always. Not yeah. everything's going to be paranormal. But at the same token, I would always like to say I'm going to move the whole group and get that person to safety just to be on the safer side. So again, it's part of the reason why we start here. It's a great story, not to mention Big John's is kind of a staple for Charleston. Big John, Big John didn't die. Not, not during that fight. He actually died from, where did he die from? It was in 2002. I want to say he had heart trouble. 
Yeah. He just died naturally. Yeah. At home or whatever. Yeah, it wasn't from any kind of fight. So or he must have shot. sold this to somebody else. Right? No yeah. tragedy is what he's saying. Yeah. No tragedy. Now, same building. We had a big earthquake here in 1886. If you didn't know that from any other tour, because we all talk yeah. about it, yeah. um, this we building fun. is allegedly where the first death occurred from that earthquake. The white mantle, a piece of it broke off in the front, hit somebody in the back of the head and killed him. And they say you could see his ghost in the middle of East Bay Street in the middle of the night. I said allegedly a lot because I don't have any proof. It's just a great segue because I get moms on the tour and I need to break away their mindset of getting sick on the tour later on. So again, especially after I tell them, like, here's your heated warning. You might get ill by going on hanging out with me. So <laughs> this is kind of the segue. Um, so we're going to actually head up this way and kind of get away from this very loud corner. You want me to throw these uh, cups away? or? <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Wonder why Big John decided to come from the New York Giants and come to Charles. Did he originally live here or something? Yeah, he's originally from here. Okay. Hey, uh, this one in my pocket ain't on, is that? Oh, you hit the light. Oh. It's okay. Just needs reset. You must have just tapped the light. Not just a big hold deal. it in your hand. That's what I did, because I couldn't be sure my pocket wouldn't turn it off either. <laughs> All right. uh, let me know if, that, if you hear a text go through on whatever phone number that came for, if that was yours or if that was his. Um, I sent it again, like just my name on it. Yep. So that one came through. Okay. That's weird. That is so weird. Maybe, well, it looks like I mean, you have a pretty updated phone. Yeah, hers is more updated than mine. So, it's just weird that my name came through, but the text I sent this morning didn't. So weird. Huh. All right, so where the heck are we? This is the big red barn lot. Um, we're actually, <laughs> we got started really early because you guys were, you showed up really early. I'm not used to those lights being on. Um, but this is where we keep some of the horses for your carriage rides. Correct. So, again, this is a, a very simple spot. Again, it's where I get to explain 10 to 11 devices a little bit further now that it's in everybody's hands. But the history here is really simple, and I made it that way on purpose so I can discuss the devices. This is the same red barn that held horses that used to deliver milk and eggs to the residents of Charleston. So keywords here are going to be delivery, milk, and eggs, and the, the, anything relative to a stable, basically. So uh, just the other night, we had the word bridle show up as soon as we walk into this area so that kind of gives you an idea so let's talk about your two spirit boxes because you're the only one using spirit boxes tonight besides my ouija board and i already know how to use it <laughs> as far as ouija boards and any kind of communication device to it goes what's the first question everybody wants to ask we don't mess with them <laughs> what happened what happened you guys watch the movies what's the first question everybody asks what do you want what do you want what else what do you need well, you're getting pretty specific. That's good. <laughs> the, the Who are I, you? <laughs> the point I try to make is, is anybody here? Because okay. that's what everybody usually, when you see a Ouija board in a movie, anybody here? And they wait for it to go to yes or no, right? Mm -hmm. so the point I'm trying to make here is that if you hear the word no coming out of that red spirit box, that means somebody's here. So we're not going to be asking yes or no questions, which is good that you didn't come up with any on your own. <laughs> so proud of you. Um, now, when I'm teaching people how to use these devices, it's a matter of asking questions you already know the answer to to kind of get used to how, how it actually works. If somebody's here, tell me what color the big red barn is. Obviously, we're looking and listening for the color red, but this guy is using song lyrics and DJs to be able to convey messages, and the word red might not be available. The fire truck, blood, heart, those three things are specifically red. I would take that as an acceptable answer. The color of the barn, blood. Good. However, most of the night, I'm going to require that there's at least two somethings going on, whether it's from the same device or not. Another example, and it's perfect because you're holding both of them. Let's say the word list gives us the word art. That doesn't mean anything over here by itself. 
you hear the number 40 out of that guy. Put them together, Art Fairclock was number 40 on Big John's team. Okay. You see where I'm, I'm putting the clues together? It's more of an escape room. This is a ghost tour. Right. So, um, again, that's going to be going for all of the devices. I haven't heard my little Ouija board guy go off. He does make a noise. Um, but, again, we're going to try to keep an eye on that millimeter in your left hand um, and, and kind of keep tabs on what you're hearing at the same time. Now, your device, Andrew, is, it's going to be... We're going to be in some spaces where there's going to be parked cars. People just don't like their cars to be filmed in case they're walking by, just so you know. Um, again, <laughs> okay. They don't know what the hell we're doing out here. you got to see my other camera. Like, it's this crazy little get-up with torch lights and all kinds of mess. I still, uh, I I still like got my use... camera in my pocket. From the, uh... <laughs> oh, God. But when I have my crew out here, I usually don't hand those to teenagers because they're the first ones that are vloggers out here for YouTube, and they're like they're filming people walking by. I'm like, people don't like to be filmed, mm -hmm. like you know that kind of thing. So I usually hand them to adults. Um, but you're going to try to do two things for us as you're filming. Um, when we're investigating a space, you want to try to keep one of us in view, just because we're going to be the warmest thing out here. So like it's much easier like, to find a cold like spot. That, right? Yep. Okay. So it's going to be much easier to find that cold spot if you have a warm point of view, which we're probably going to be 97 to 100 degrees because it's a little humid tonight. Um, she's like, nope, I'm hotter than 100 degrees. Oh, no, <laughs> I'm always cold. You're talking <laughs> That was supposed to be like. <laughs> I, I, I'm assuming this is your husband. Okay, yeah. so that was supposed to be you flirting with him. I'm hotter than 100 degrees there, Andy. So I'm trying to help you out there. I appreciate but, it. <laughs> but the other thing you're going to try to do is keep the sky out of view. The reason the why sky. is, yeah, the blue dot is going to default to the sky if it's in view because it's looking for a surface. There's no surface on the sky. So again, it's going to be impossible in some places, so just try to do your best. Again, it is your video, so you be the best videographer that you could possibly be. Um, I'll stand away and you can... Uh... No, I'm, I'm, I'm specifically filming you that way in case somebody, something comes yeah. up on you or something. I'll exactly. say, there, there he is, right behind you, you know what I mean? What do you got going on there? Now, as far as this guy, I'm going to every once in a while help you out and say, let's take a look at that word list. And I'm going to kind of flip through it and see if there's anything there. Now, I don't see anything at all that's relevant. Again, most of that's going to be the 80% garbage unless I can tie the name Logan to a football team member or somebody else that might yeah. have been... Or the little boy that got beat up. What was their name? The two little boys that got beat up. no idea. Oh. Now, for a minute, I got like a 1.7, then it went down to 1.2, and that's yeah. back to double zero. Uh. Well, up to 1.1, just so you know, is natural from the earth. So when I get those like one ones, one threes, like I'm like, yeah, we're gonna wash those. That's why I go straight to 2.5. That kind of definitely signifies that something might actually be occurring. Okay. I say we get away from football players and ponies. You guys want to learn some real history? Sure. <laughs> All right, let's do this. I know I got you guys wet now. You're working. I still got about 25 pounds in the bag. This is the most interesting part of my day so far. So keep going. Where else have you guys done today? Well, I hate riding in the car. <laughs> <laughs> we're just gonna start there. We got up this morning, we came and found the place that we're going to get on the ship, so we could be ahead of that. Okay. And about the carriage, we did a carriage ride, and we the car most of the time because the traffic is bad at 5 o'clock. Yeah. Where'd y'all come from? Um, Folly Beach. Okay. That's where you guys live? No, we live in North Carolina. guy's doing he's having his own little party yeah so welcome to your first weird spot it's a parking lot congratulations you made it this one, no one's parking lot. Yeah. <laughs> so what's funny is the folks that where they leave a, a nasty review they they always say i took them to parking lots not realizing that it actually used to be something relative to the history of charleston and it makes me angry because i put a lot of time into this and researching what these places used to look like and what they used to be who live there and those kind of things. So it was kind of a, all right, lady, I get it. You don't understand history. Move on. That's right. yeah. So this place used to be the Eliza and Charles Pinckney Mansion. So. Which probably Pinckney, that's, that's a. The name of the street. The name yeah. of the street we started on, correct. So it's a good thing you remember that. Because where did you guys park, by the way? In that uh, hey, little place the in, at the marketplace. There's, the marketplace. A, there's a place that yeah. parks sideways, you know? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'll get you yeah. back to there. Yeah. We're not, we only go half a mile. Like, we don't walk very far. So, but it's very easy to get back to places based on where we are. Yeah. So, first off, I'm not going to be giving you questions like what color is George Washington's white horse, like what we did over there with the red barn. You're going to get the answers from these two devices okay. in your hand. And I'm going to withhold information on purpose. So, 
and I have to say, Andrew, I think I have that exact outfit in my closet. I mean, hat and all, because I collect these. Oh, so, she, she, like, she picked them out for me. I swear, I have, I'm looking at your outfit. I'm like, I think I have those shorts. I don't have the shoes, but I think I got the polo, the black hat. Like, I said she's the one picks out. That's I mean. good, don't it? Um, and Norm, just so you normally, know, like, oh, these, this, where I bought this one, this is probably the best series of hats I ever bought. It's, it's a Boston Scally. Where'd you get it from? Okay. Um, Boston best, Scally. Best quality I've ever seen. So this one is a little cooler because obviously I'm out here a lot. It's got the, the aerator holes in it. Mm -hmm. um, but I always have a pin on mine. But the quality of these, I mean, I have stacks of these. These, are, these are Stetsons. I got two of them. I got, okay. I got this one and a beige one. So. I normally have, I have three wool ones that I wear in the wintertime because I'm not a very big person. So, I mean, I got hot hands going, but I have wool ones that I wear in the winter. And, and again, they you just get... these in the winter too, the ghost tours? Year round, honey. Seven my, nights a week. If, if this is... If this is good for me, I'm going to recommend my friend come because she's really fascinated with ghosts. Okay. My co worker. <laughs> she loves them. She'd love it. She'd love to be out here. Bless her heart. Well, what's fun when I have smaller groups like this is you guys get a chance to use more than one device. So when I have my teams of like 10 or 11, I have to spread them out based on who's there. So again, I have to look at where's my older folks, where's my little kids, you know, that kind of mentality. But anyway, back to the pink things. They're the ones that are important right now. Not us. <laughs> no, not us. So, uh, Eliza and Charles uh, had a son named Charles. They had a nephew named Charles. That's three different Charleses. There's a reason why we always look for a secondary clue, like what I explained over there with 40 and Art, because we never know which Charles we're actually chatting with, if he actually decides to come through, one of them. But the son and the nephew were signers of the Constitution for South Carolina. So obviously the son was raised here. So that's a pretty big deal for us, but I hate politics more than anybody. So we're gonna talk about Eliza. She has a way cooler story. Eliza married Charles at a young age, according to today's standards. If we're going to ask her how old she was when she got married, we're not going to hear numbers from like the colonial times, like 12 and 14. We're going to hear based on today's standards. And the reason I bring that up is because her husband was over double her age. We might get either number. There's a creepy age gap then, creepy age gap now. So kind of keep that in mind. But she married Charles because her father was over in England where they're from. And he was trying to bring all his children home one last time. And Eliza didn't want to go. Why? Because she didn't think he was dying. So oh. she stayed put, and it's 1744. You don't get married for a green card in 1744. We're not even a country. She did marry Charles out of love, but she was right. Dad didn't die right away. Instead, he starts sending her gifts from England to this space. One of those gifts happened to be the plant seeds of indigo. And you guys have been in town for a little while. You've probably seen the word indigo somewhere, I promise you. Uh, indigo is a plant that makes blue dye that makes our blue jeans blue. Actually, you're the only one wearing it right now. Um, but she didn't know what to do with these seeds when she got them. She learned from her slaves how to keep it cultivated, and then she moved it to a, a cash crop plantation just south of here by the Stono River. Calls her father up and says, rice plantations are going downhill. Let's make a killing with the indigo. And now we have an international businesswoman during colonial times. Now that's her business. Like, I'd just like to get that out of the way because there's weird stuff about this family that we're going to be able to ask Eliza, and I'm going to give you questions, and we're going to kind of go through them. You can pick and choose whatever you want. I normally assign them because I use six different types of communication devices, but the mansion's not here anymore. We can ask what happened to it, and when did that happen? Like, I get that answer all the you time. You don't know when the mansion was torn down or whatever? Or oh, I do, yeah. but I'm not telling you guys. Oh. <laughs> not, we're going to get the answers from this. We can obviously ask Eliza how she was when she got married. Um, Eliza, the one we just talked about, was the second wife named Eliza from Charles, back to back. Oh. So the first wife died in January of 1744, and five months later, he married the one we just talked about in May of 1744. They were quick back then. I know, right? So the irony about this is that both Elizas have a maiden name that starts with the letter L. Ella? It wasn't Ella. I'm just saying. Yeah. Names and numbers usually don't lie, but when I see things, I'm like, yeah, I've dove into that name at this location. I don't know any Ella that's okay. relative to this location. But sometimes her maiden name will show up on this particular spirit box. I, don't, I can't say I've ever heard it on this one, um, and that would be the second one. So we can ask which Eliza we have. Um, Eliza's death, the second one, uh, we can ask anything we want to. She's pretty open about it. Um, so how old she was, where she died from, where she's buried, and what president was a pallbearer at her funeral. Like, that just shows how important she was. Um, and as far as the kids go, it's very minimal. And what we can do as far as asking questions about the children, um, we can ask how many and what their names were. Like, that's pretty much it. Because if we start poking the bear, there's a tragedy among one of those children. And we don't want to poke the bear and be disrespectful. So, again, when I'm assigning those, it's normally like, hey, you just focus on this. So, let's kind of start with, have, first off, have you heard anything come out of this guy? Not about Ella. That you know of. Or Again, I'm, with, I'm withholding a lot of information. So, 
with that said. I just seen Republican pop up on here today. Oh. Yeah, right. It does actually. <laughs> um, so most of the Pinkney men were politicians of some sort. Um, and I want to say that the nephew actually became a Republican governor. So I will dive into that just to be certain. And then you said the president mm -hmm. was a pallbearer at the funeral. That one's a little iffy okay. because Democratic Republican was a joined party at the time. Okay. So then they kind of broke off one of those called the Whig Party, and then right. it was called, I guess, right. the Democrats, right? Right. Yeah. Exactly. So, uh, but have you heard anything at all come up on there? I hear all kinds of things coming through here. It's like just a it, bunch of. It's not easy up. to do. No, it's garbled to Any me. Any numbers showing up on your on your other device there? No, every now and then it'll pop up a little low, but not, nothing. But so I mean. we're gonna do a couple of laps. We're gonna try not to film these cars here. I'm gonna break out this little Ouija board guy, and we're gonna see what it's gonna give us here. So. Davis LV over there. I'll turn up the sensitivity so if it's going to give us a bunch of verbal mess, we can kind of see what happens. So it seems like you're pretty interested in the, the president piece, right? So I'm that, just curious. Okay, perfect. So Eliza, I have Tammy and Andrew. Can you tell us which president was the tall bearer at your funeral? Put it up on one of these boxes that you already know how to use. <laughs> <laughs> giving me little spikes so you might actually have some numbers popping up. Despite this these basically these two devices work the same way. If mine gives me letters, yours is going to give us the actual measurement of the electromagnetic field. Come on Eliza, give us some answers. <laughs> you know how this works. No, I wasn't here last night. <laughs> I've got two N's back to back. I'm waiting for her to spell out my name. That happens. Oh, like yeah, I got 3.1 right now. 3.1. We'll take it. Now we're going to Now I'm going to drop back down to a point four. It was like 3.1 for this so time. No, don't give me anything below a 3.1. We're going to keep escalating it so that way I'm not breaking down a trillion numbers. Normally okay. we get a lot of readings out of this place. So don't give you device. nothing lower than a 3.1. Yeah, we're going to keep it going up. Okay. So once you give me like a five point whatever, yeah. Keep it going. So far. <laughs> of course, it jumps up to like 20s and 30s. Then, <laughs> Eliza, were you trying to spell my name? She gives me an X. What are you hearing? No matter how silly you think it is. You have to remember, I listen to that every single day. And that's the, like, when I'm doing my own investigations, I do one super fast and one super slow, like what we're doing here. And before I even do the research on the location. Like, I don't want it to be biased of, like, listening for specific things. I'm getting a lot of little spikes over here, so. Any numbers showing up on your end? There's a wish on here. 
See your other device for a second. I want to see because I'm getting all kinds of readings. What does this mean? Sydney. I'm looking all around no you there. No cold spots. No, no cold spots. Evening. No. We are definitely here in the evening. Don't too big for me. And you will get better at listening to that as we move on. I'm sure. It's usually what happens. It's usually by the last stop I'm writing down a million notes from the spirit box listeners. so fast it's hard to yeah those are the devices that go to the teenagers by the way huh. they usually do pretty well with it. Eliza you want to tell us anything before I wrap this up <laughs> been pretty quiet. I'm not even getting her initials or anything. I thought I would see numbers on there whenever this was giving me letters, but it must be measuring a different type of EMF. Oh, remember that one 3.1? Yeah, that's, that's pretty small for this location. I normally like an average spike of what I see here is usually between 18 and 22. Wow. Yeah, like that's, that's pretty like high. A high. Like, I mean, I've seen it going like crazy in this location, but like the threes, fives, and nines, like those are pretty small for this space. Yeah. So other spaces we're going to go to later on, those will be exciting. But over here, I'm not super excited about it because I normally see at least one 18 to 22 on average. But how do you know if the a ghost, I mean, not everybody's ghost stays here on around, right? Not necessarily. I mean, so... With me being out here seven nights a week, there yeah. are more active nights than others. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm, I'm keeping track of moon phases, I'm keeping track of the weather, yeah. time of year, like all of those things. Yeah. Like, that, that all makes a huge difference. Like, right now for the month of September, there's really nothing going I mean, on a lot of people the just, family. A lot of people just die and just die, right? I Correct. Mean, there ain't no ghost or nothing, I mean. It, well, it depends. It depends on what happened in their lifetime. I always look for a raised emotion. When was their wedding date? When was their their birthday? What was exciting to them? Um, you know, what happened to them at death? You yeah. know, did they have a tragic loss? Well, you know? saying, uh, most people, they get busy go with like trauma or some tragic happen, you know. And then, right. Uh, it's always a tragedy with other ghost stories. Yeah. For me, it's it could be a wedding day. Yeah. That was the happiest day of their life. That's a raised emotion. 
So and, I'm always looking at those there, kind of is things there, too. Is there a ghost actually here, or just the the, the thought, of, the memory of that happiness they had? Well, know? that's at the like that's what we'll be discussing at the next location. Yeah. Because it is not a intelligent ghost like what I would like out of this location where we can ask questions and get answers. Yeah. Now with Tammy having this in her ear for the very first time, she's probably just missing a lot of things, which oh, is wow, perfectly fine. Cool. So you're going to see in my notes tomorrow morning when I'm going through it, like there's a whole lot of things in there that might not be relevant, but I'm still like, that's a weird phrase for the radio. I'm going to write it down. All right, so I'm going to call it on this one because I'm not getting a whole lot out of this guy. We didn't get a whole lot out of the readings. Go ahead and stop your video and kind of give your hands a break. That's the orange stop. square. It'll turn to a circle. One way or the other. Um, you know, I thought I'd keep it on y'all. Uh, you your... can. Um, so the names I normally hear, or what you guys normally hear, are Benjamin and John. Now, I don't have anything significant about these two guys except for the fact that they both lived here at the same time, and I get their names every six to seven weeks. So at this particular spot? Same alley. Same alley, yeah. Always this alley every six to seven weeks. Benjamin now, I did get and... the name Ben just the other night, which is outside of that six to seven week loop that we were in we're at week three right now. So that was on Sunday night when that came through, and I was stoked because it was an anomalous happening. We don't normally get it on week three of the loop because I do keep track of it. Now, when I say people lived here, it wasn't a whole lot of people that lived here. Only two to five people lived here at a time. So when I get the same two names every six to seven weeks, there has to be something going on. The bricks, again, this is where we're getting into the bricks. These are Belgian blocks. They're made of granite. They're not supposed to have any electrical charge to them whatsoever. If you put that device in your pocket on any brick, mm -hmm. you shouldn't get anything above 1.1. Yeah. Um, make sure nobody's walking by somebody kicks it. Go ahead and set it on any dry brick. And look at and see what any numbers that you can kind of get out of it. Lay it flat. There you go. Yeah, come on. Face up. There you go. So Man. I've seen it at times go all the way up to 15 during that six to seven week loop. Now I'm not expecting a whole lot because again we're in week three yeah. of the loop. Here. So <laughs> okay. <laughs> Two point four three six. Well, that's the highest of the five, night. Four six five one. Five four. Five four. Yeah. High five. five. Yep, five four. Yeah. Yeah. Listen, listen. Okay. You can go ahead and pick it up. Five five is looks like our spike. So that's good. We actually got something out of it. Um, so again, yeah, sometimes I get absolutely nothing when we're down here and I don't expect anything unless we're getting close to that six to seven week loop or we're inside of it. Mm -hmm. So we're dealing with the stone tape theory here. Basically earthly materials like granite if they're in a long in, in you're a saying same space. You get, you're getting a lot of activity about every six to seven weeks. Correct. So All right, but, but just behind that is and when, and when did um when did the last act, the activity happen uh, that high? I mean, so I had that fifteen point something showed up on the last six to seven week loop and we had the name Ben and John in the same evening. Yeah. Or well within two evenings of each other. So it was within that loop. Now, the stone tape theory says if an earthly material has been in the same spot for hundreds of years, you yeah. can hang on to the memories of what's going on here, kind of like what you were mentioning earlier. Yeah. So that's my belief of what's going on here. Is I'm not getting like, hey, Eliza, give me this answer. It's more like we're watching a movie, and we're waiting for that movie to end in that six to seven week loop so we get the names, we get more prevalent things about those two specific gentlemen. Which every once in a while we'll get so a does, third. So does does the movie start back over <laughs> once that? Yeah, it's six, it's a six to seven week long movie. So yeah. that's the easiest way. And then it's it like just start, on starts back over like a loop. Right. So on well, the so six whatever, to seven whatever week, happened in that six to seven weeks? I have no idea. I mean, why it did happen? I can't find anything about those two specific gentlemen. Like I said, it just keeps going. You and think every that, once you, that you while, believe you guys just will keeps hear going? A third name. Yeah. That third name is Jane. That's a third person that lived here in 1801. There's only five total. Yeah. So again, there's only two other names that I don't have. When you say live here, you're talking about like live this in this building or? No, these two buildings weren't here. Little tiny shopman houses. So again, this was kind of like a poor neighborhood. But this was the street. This was the street. And it had little houses. Little on tiny it. one to two room houses in it. Yeah. But this right here wasn't a, a, a prominent neighborhood, I yeah. guess. So you have to remember too yeah. the layout of the land. The other side of the wall would have been on East Bay Street where we were just walking down, but across the street from where we were. Mm -hmm. Those buildings down there wouldn't have been there either. The smell of low tide would be coming through here a lot. 
the rich people of Charleston aren't going to put up with that. So again, the people that lived here were coopers, they were seamstresses, uh, prostitutes, like they weren't very wealthy people at all. Mm -hmm. So this space to me is super interesting because there's a lot of data here that I don't know. So again, it's very vague, like I keep getting the same names and I don't know anything else about them. And they don't, uh, they don't ever, um, what do you think, they don't ever, I mean, you got some kind of historical place around here that can you can read up on things or look to for? To tie this place to? Just any, yeah, anything around Charleston. Is there some kind of a record place? Yeah, I mean, and, and, and I've been through a lot of their databases yeah, trying to yeah. find these people, and there's not a whole lot of information because these are early 1800s. Yeah. So basically, I didn't keep good record, but no. And unless, remember, unless you were somebody important, I didn't care. The amount of fires yeah. that we've had, a lot of that, those records, they've been lost. So again, the only thing I have is a basic census list of the address, the name, and what their occupation was. That's it. It's very, very slim. It's not a long list. So it's like it covers a 60-year span. And there's all, it's only a page and a half long. Yeah. Because again, only two to five people lived here at a time. That's all they got. didn't. I mean, back in them days, they nobody didn't even like keep birth certificates or anything, right? I mean, really. I could really dive into the birth certificates, but again, the names I'm looking at are very common. Benjamin Hopkins. Did, did they keep? Johnson. Did they keep birth certificates back in that, as early as that? Like 17 something. I could probably find where the birth came from, like if he belonged to a specific church, if I were to deep dive into his parents, and so forth and so on. Yeah. Again, I don't have all that information. Yeah. It's hard to dig through it if you can find it at all, not to mention the amount of churches we have here, yeah. especially during that time frame, trying to find out where he actually went to church at, yeah. or where his parents went to church at, yeah. or if he went to church at. Right. That could have been another factor too. So, the other piece that's down here is that Freemasons actually had a Masonic Lodge down here. So that's why they call it Lodge Alley. So that's where its name came from. This, we, this alley here. Mm -hmm. Can I ask you a crazy question? Yeah. And I'm not crazy. I promise you I'm not crazy. <laughs> well, that's, you ever heard uh, something say something to you in your ear? Yeah. Have you, like, I was at my job one night, and I'm not making this up. I'm a nurse at a hospital. I'm not a crazy person. Okay? I can't remember who you're talking to. I okay. get these stories well, every night. Yeah. I'm sitting at, the, at my table, at my desk, in my office, and there's a desk behind me where my coworker sits. And I'm Feel, you know how you had a peripheral vision, and mm -hmm. I felt something kind of come and spook beside me, and I thought it was her looking at the computer while I was looking. And all of a sudden, I hear something lean in, it's like that. I screamed. I mean, it made the hair stand up on my arms. It still does to this day. I don't know what it was. I don't know what was going on. It was crazy. But she heard it too. So, <laughs> And we were the only two people in there. Periodically, like the trash can, or it's like one of those pins where mm -hmm. it's like pressure. You got right, the right. pressure on it, it'll just pop open and pop back up. And it's like something walks by the automatic pin and pound that's fixed, and it'll. You need to set up some cameras or something around there. See what's going on. There's other ways to do it. I'm just so, it's, it's a problem. I mean, it's just our office. But the, the well, here's here's a better question. We can talk and walk because that was pretty much. I just like to say that the I mean, Freemasons I don't, I don't have to come through here too. Not, I promise Why? I'm not. Why would you think that I'm the person that's going to think you're crazy? Well, <laughs> don't tell people that I think I'm crazy. But. I, these are the stories I, I live for. I love because every night you guys. And they turn it off to the next event. Yeah, you can go ahead and fill it. Like I'm not even from the south. Okay. So <laughs> I made friends with a psychic and we started working together because I was going to write a book about him. Well, we started getting door slammed in our faces after a few cases. That wasn't even used. It was all about him. Uh -huh. So when I moved down here, my new wife was going through my files and she sees all of the chapters that I've written about my time with the psychic. So she's like, you need to turn this into a blog and see what happens. So we turned it into a blog. It blew up. Like crazy kind of traffic coming through the website. I'm like, holy cow. So then we turned it into a podcast. You know, obviously I like to talk. So it was a matter of the podcast started to take off. Then somebody heard my podcast and recruited me out of my six-figure salary job that I was already established in and said, do you want to be a tour guide? And I said, those guys don't make any money. So he's like, we, we can work on this. So I was like, I don't want to work for a company. Like, if I'm going to do this, it's, it's got to be me all the way. So I learned from him for a year while I was out here trying to just get a feel for things. And I kept adding things to the kit, talking to you guys. What equipment do you want to use? What do you want to see? Next thing you know, here I am three years later. I'm away from him. I own the company. Stories in the Cemetery was already the name of the podcast. It's established. My wife created the logo. I still write books. And I just signed up for a master's degree in history to be basically an archivist when I can't tour anymore. 
So all of my degrees are in writing, but that's how I got into it. I've been into this since I was a little kid. Is this place more haunted than any place you've been, you think? No, not necessarily. Oh, well. I, don't, I hate to look at it as a full city, because it's so hard to explore a full city and say, this city is the most haunted, you know what I mean? Like, this, this city is more haunted than this one. I look at the location. It's the specific deep dive, what's the latitude, longitude of the space, and we'll kind of take it from there. Are there spaces in Savannah that You're are You're trying to find a scientific explanation for all this. Always. Yeah. Always. And, and you may never. Because <laughs> there may I'm not be one. I'm having fun doing it. Yeah, you yeah. are having fun doing it. Because I keep expanding the kit. I keep teaching you guys. And how do you learn? You teach. So, and this is more like a class. Like, I'm sure you guys picked up on that. It's world history. Here's how to use this device. You're going to get better at it. So forth and so on. So, this is beautiful that we actually have this whole alley to ourselves, first off, because this is a pretty popular spot. You asked about the dueling. This is the dueling alley. So, yeah, you guys probably heard a good bit of this story mm -hmm. when you were on your carriage tour today, I'm sure. Yeah, we come by right, right there. So, here's the specific things that I normally hear, and here's the misnomers. I normally tell this story a lot different. I'm not going to give you the full gist because you've already heard it. Um, the things I look for, let me tell you about Ralph Isaacs. The, the one, one of them shot in the air. Yeah, and another one shot in the one shot right. head. So Dr. Joseph Brown Ladd and Ralph Isaacs were friends and how the doctor got here. And the doctor came here from Rhode Island. One of the ironic pieces I find is the letters R-I show up here even before I had this Ouija board device. They used to show up on the spirit boxes. Ralph Isaacs has the same initials as where the doctor came from, Rhode Island. So again, two different clues from two different characters of the story. I always need the secondary clue so I know who it belongs to. Um, we do get common themes around this location with the spirit boxes. The number 59 shows up because that's where the doctor lived, 59 Church Street. Um, we'll get the word Rose that shows up here all the time. Why? Because 59 Church Street is known as the Thomas Rose House. Like That's what it's called in the Charleston Registry. So again, we get that all the time. We get the name Amanda here. That was the doctor's fiance. Um, we get shot, we get kneecap, we get all kinds of things. Not to mention, he was the whistling doctor. So, we do get songs with whistling in it. Like, on the spirit box. Like, are you, And we don't hear it at any other time other than the fact of when I'm telling this story. Um, so, these are just the commonality things that I normally get out of that. But you've already heard that story today, so I'm not going to repeat it. However, I'm going to tell you how I got booted out of here. Because I'm going to tell you something that the other tours won't tell you. She said, oh, he gets in trouble. Let's hear this. <laughs> so this alley didn't always go all the way through. So okay. it was actually cut off on this side, which means those bricks are older bricks. Those bricks are actually sun-dried bricks from slave children. There's a full handprint and fingerprint swipes at the end, and I would always take my groups all the way through. But we're not allowed to go all the way through. Again, it's residential at the end. Now, my groups always want to try to get a reading out of that brick, and I treat it the same way I do a grave. That slave kid's not trying, like, hanging out by that brick in the afterlife. So it was it's a matter not of... happy as spot, anyway. Right, exactly. So my group on November 26th decided they're going to huddle around that brick, and they're going to try to get a reading. I'm trying to shoo them along because it's outside the dining room window of the beautiful mansion at the end of the alley. Well, the gentleman saw us and come out screaming. My daughter was on the tour that night. She thought it was great because dad's getting yelled at. Yeah. So <laughs> we moved on, and the next day was Thanksgiving, so I didn't have a tour. Yeah. So I'll move on to this side so they can come through. Um, so I didn't have a tour that day. So November 28th, I actually got a phone call from the tourism office asking me to go down halfway, like what we're allowed to do, or to reroute my group. Well, to me, it's not fair to have my group of 10 try to investigate a space around 20 to 60 other people. We're allowed to go to 20 people. I just won't do it. Yeah, that's what the big groups that we normally see here on the weekends. So I decided I'm going to reroute my group and I'm going to take them over to the Powder Magazine instead and we're going to talk about pirates over there. Okay. And I was like, okay, yeah, that's we're going to see what happens. So I don't believe in the story. I told my team that. I'm like, I don't even know much about pirates in Charleston, but we're going to wing it and see what happens. So before we left, somebody hears the name Ann on a spirit box. I did not tell them we were going to be investigating Ann Bonnie, the female pirate. So I was like, gosh, oh, maybe something's actually going to happen. So we get up there, and somebody else hears the number 300. I don't know what that means until I do the research the next day. We were there on November 28th of 2020, and Bonnie's trial for piracy was November 28th of 1720. We were there on the exact 300-year anniversary of her pirate trial. Oh, wow. Yeah, so I'm a vampire guy. <laughs> New Orleans would be my thing. That's why I got so excited when we started chatting earlier. So pirates were not my thing at all. I will tell you, since that day, I have read more damn books on piracy and trying to debunk and trying to put together a factual story around pirate lore. So where we're going next is near the Powder Magazine. There's a lot going on up in that space, but it is a hit or miss. You're either going to hear a crap ton of stuff or you're, we're not going to get anything at all. 
So with that, we're gonna use the motion sensor on the device in your pocket, and I'll show you how to use that um, because that's a fun one to use in that location. Um, but you've already heard this crazy story, and technically I'm not even supposed to be down here anyway. But I also like to point out why this gate is here. Did anybody okay. tell you why that was here? No. We didn't go down here. We just stopped. Yeah, yeah. yeah they we... usually stop over there on Cumberland. Yeah. So this gate was here in the events there was a loser to the duel. This was the shortcut to get to the cemetery across the street over there. Otherwise, they'd have to go all the way down this alley, go over to Queen Street, and bring them around. The church steeple's right there. Yeah. That's where the cemetery is. So this was the shortcut. It, that rod iron gate wasn't always there. So I want to say where that. Where did that, they do the actual shooting? Right here? Right here. Right. So there was no door to that gate. It was just an open, just open. arch. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. So the rod iron gate, I want to say, is probably mid to late 1800s. Um, possibly even and all this all this was pretty was pretty legal the, the, the game the, it was not legal the pistol shooting was not legal yeah was dueling was not legal then how what happens when then with the game was that when it was over and one of them died i mean you just go bury the person and go celebrate the winner but it wasn't it wasn't legal scatter quick it wasn't legal but nope. no, nobody nobody's getting the other guy for murder right the police the, the police didn't care if the other guy right. got shot. It, just, it was definitely not. It's a not. Legal thing. It's not legal, but it, right. we don't care either. Right. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Getting rid of the riffraff. And yeah. this is actually named Philadelphia Alley because after Dueler's Alley was a nickname. Yeah. So this used to be called Kinlock's Court because it belonged to Frank Kinlock. And after that, the reason why it was cut off at the end was because this was called Cow Alley. This is where they kept the livestock for the whole city. They kept them in one area. Man. Yeah. And then it became Dueler's Alley. And then it became Philadelphia Alley after they opened it up all the way because we, they renamed it to try to get rid of Dueler's Alley nickname because Philadelphia actually helped us out of one of our many fires that I said we had. Yeah. Right. So, financially. So, there's your full history of Philadelphia Alley. There you go. <laughs> and we do get things relative to Cow Alley here. We'll get beef, cow, cattle. Like, we do get those things while we're here. It's the weirdest thing. You started talking about that cake disposed dropped up on yeah. here. Yeah, the body. Go ahead and turn this off for a second. <laughs> yeah, you can take a break on that one. Evidence. <laughs> so here's how the story goes. Mm -hmm. This building took 10 years to build. Our story begins <coughs> right in the middle of its construction. First off, does that sound like our government small building 10 years? No, not at all. Um, but <laughs> 1708, a young lady moves here by the name of Anne Cormack. She moves here with her father and his mistress. The mistress is Anne's mother. Are you with me so far? There's a couple so of she's twisted. illegitimate. Right, you got it. So the three of them are running away from his wife. So oh. from Ireland to here. Okay. They land in Georgetown, just north of here, between us and Myrtle Beach. Dad bought a plantation. Mom died pretty quickly. That means he has to send young Anne down here to sell anything from the plantation to keep things afloat. That's why we're here. It's familiar. So, young Anne back home in Ireland is said to have killed one of her servants when she was very young, probably 8, 9, 10 years old, with a knife to the belly. Like, she was a young lady when she did that. So, i just like to give you that mentality of her as we go through her history. She's a little ruthless. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Fast forward. Building's finished in 1713. Pirates are coming through town in 1715. Anne is stoked because she wants to fall in love so she can get her freedom just like a man. So, she falls in love with guy number one. Yes, I'm going to keep tally. There's a handful. Guy number one turns out to be James Bonney. You already see where this one's going because, you know, her name's Anne Bonney. But Dad didn't approve, so they run away to Jamaica, they elope, they get married. She's now Anne Bonney. But this guy is not Captain Jack Sparrow that she was hoping for. <laughs> this guy is, a, he's a privateer. He's a spy for the British. This is not who she wanted. Yeah. So a few years later, she falls in love again. His name is John Rackham. This guy is literally the Captain Jack Sparrow because this is the person that they based the Captain Jack Sparrow character off of. His nickname was Calico Jack. Uh -huh. He has his own ship and wants to be part of it. Can't put a girl on a pirate crew. You know why? They're bad luck. <laughs> They're bad luck, right. You'd be surprised how many people don't know that. Um, and that's, I want to make sure people are paying attention. So I always throw a question in there every once in a while. But anyway, he makes a deal with her. If you dress like a guy, you could be on the crew, but you're going to be a female in my quarters. She's okay with this. It's a man's world. I'm a pirate. Let's go. Two and two together. We could figure out that being a female in his quarters, she's eventually going to get pregnant can't have a pregnant pirate dude on the crew. Somebody's going to figure <laughs> yeah. out that she's female. So Jack drops her <clears> off in Cuba. Go have the baby over here. Come back later. We'll figure it out. So she goes and has the baby, but returns with no child. We have no idea what happened to the child. She probably killed it. We don't know that. <laughs> Just so yeah. She may have left them there. So, But she returns dressed as a female, which 
pisses Jack off pretty badly. So, um, to make him even more mad, he captured another pirate crew and they're down below deck. Anne's gonna go flirting with that pirate crew, obviously, to make him even more angry. The wrong guy number three, in case you lost track. Guy number three turns out to be a female, dressed like a guy to be part of the pirate crew that Calico Jack captured. So, now we have two females dressed as males trying to be pirates. Her <laughs> name was Mary Reed. She went by so Margaret. So she fell in love with the woman. Correct. Okay. Okay. Now, we not know Back in them other. days? Yeah. <laughs> Man. That's exactly, awesome. in them days. Yeah. So, that's, believe it or not, homosexuality goes back long, long ago. So, I mean, there was well, a study I had to do for that for school. It's kind of um, wild to hear a story like this about it. I know, especially <laughs> I mean, in the 1700s. Yeah. So her husband's already a pirate and going to kill her anyway. Yeah. Yeah. No, her husband is member James Bonney. Calico Jack is not a husband. He's just a lover. He's just a beau. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, <clears throat> anyway, her, uh, Mary went by Mark to become a pirate, but they become friends, possibly lovers, as I suggested. But the British find out where they are. They send an entire fleet of ships to take down one pirate ship. Anne and Mary are the only two pirates not drunk enough to come up and fight, probably because they don't know how to use the cannons yet. They only have one bullet flintlocks. So, obviously, two ladies trying to take on a fleet of ships with one bullet flintlocks is not going to work out. Okay. They get captured. And as they're being arrested, she looks at her captain, her bow, Calico Jack, and says, You should have fought like a man instead of being hanged like a dog. The word dog is very prominent on our spirit boxes. Yeah. The judge, his name is Nick as well, so my name shows up here often. Gabriella. He... Gabriella. Gabrielle. Gabrielle? Yeah. Is that something important to her? <sighs> Possibly, but I don't know the names of the children, so we're going to get into that okay. in a minute. But the judge wants to see the two men that fought back so valiantly. Mm -hmm. So the two ladies go in front. By the way, Calico Jack and the drunken pirates are already dead and gone. They're, they're already hung. So the two ladies go in front. They reveal their gender, trying to save themselves. He doesn't care. So he's still <laughs> going to hang them. They're still pirates. Yeah. We plead our bellies was the last thing they screamed out because you can't hang a pregnant woman in 1720. It's illegal. I've so heard he this before. Him. Yeah, he goes back to the jail, delays the hanging. Dad is still here in Charleston with all of his Irish money. He bails out Anne only, brings her back home. She remarries. That's husband number two, but guy number four, because we're going to count Mary Reed. She has four kids and dies at the age of 84. Uh, That's all we know after her pirate She lived a long time. Man. Yes, exactly. Yeah. As far as Mary Reed goes, she died a year later, 1721, from whatever pirates died from in that Jamaican jail. So yeah. most articles and books will tell you that it was fever, something like very simple, but I would imagine it was very scurvy and bumpy and gross and nasty, and it was just very colorful. Pink. We'll put it that yeah. way. So the only two questions I left out, like I'm not going to go through a series of questions like what we did at the Pinkney Mansion, but the two things I did leave out are the names of Anne Bonnie's parents, the father and the mistress, and the name of Calico Jack's ship. By this point, when I have my 10 and 11 people, they all know what to do it with their devices at this point. So I let them like fully explore. If they want to go to the front to get footage and not interrupt other tours, they can do that. Um, but a lot of people with the spirit boxes, they'll hang out just nearby the building so that way they can kind of get a gist of like what's going on here. Now, your camera loves to act up here. Let me show you something on, on this device oh, here. Oh, you got 6.4. Oh. oh, that's actually... Oh, you're on a hold. So you got okay. that 6.4 <laughs> from somewhere else. So... And you must have tapped the hold button to keep it on that screen. So. I just put it in my pocket. Yeah. <laughs> um, so this device will also detect motion. Mm -hmm. So what that means is that oh, we got a two seven. Something's growing right here. Three oh. I mean, we're close to the electrical poles. But we yeah. normally get like a five if it's coming from that. Yeah. But the antenna that I just put up, mm -hmm. if something gets close to it, it's going to go off. Mm -hmm. I like to ask Ann Bonnie her hair color here because the only way for her to tell us is to touch the metal stick, the antenna. So, again, it, it's a very sensitive device, so when something goes by it, like there's a way to reset it to make sure it's not coming from you. There's a whole series of things. But let's see, as you walk around, try to keep your thumb on this bottom button right here. Um, that'll reset it every time you, you see it go off. Click that button. Every time, every time it, it, it blues, I yep. just hit the, the bottom button here. You right? got it. Okay. And then if we get a red, obviously we have a direct answer. All right.
So what exactly, okay, you say this was the powder house. Right. What exactly was this house? This wasn't there. Do you see the, like the triangle and the bricks? Yeah. So whenever it wasn't serving a war, they would turn it into office buildings, attorney buildings, mercantiles, textiles. So this was kind of like the back house. Right. Um, and then they eventually turned it into a normal rectangular building, like our normal Charleston charm, so yeah. short in front and long in the back. Mm -hmm. um, and it's apartments right now. Okay. So people actually just live there now? Just yeah. Every day? All yeah. right. Yep. Yeah, they saw it. I mean, I, I forgot about the crosses, but I know they, they had the bolts, like the, yep, the square those, things. Right. And they, some of the richer houses ever had the lines covering yeah, the bolts and but stuff. But those earthquake bolts don't actually work. They don't actually work? No. It was just, I mean, it, they thought they did. Yeah. But basically what it is is a turnbuckle. So if we have an earthquake and the building starts to tear a little bit, you're supposed to be able to tighten those turnbuckles going on either side, opposite directions, and it's supposed to straighten the building back up again. Yeah. That shit that's, work. A, that's what I'm saying. You, you probably couldn't tight. You probably could not adjust a building by tightening some bolts. <laughs> no. But, <laughs> that was just some good. Like, look how crude them things are. Yeah. And there's more to the architecture of this building that makes it so unique yeah. because there's sand in the roof underneath, like packed underneath those shingles. Yeah. Because if there, if it did get attacked. The sand would go up in the air with the explosion and fall to put out the fire on the gunpowder. Wow. Yeah, that doesn't work like either. A, I mean, but that, that was their idea of a fire exchanger. Exactly. Yeah, got we had another gunpowder magazine closer the to the... thing that's popped up on this is Keel and Steven. Steven. And Keel. I don't know, maybe somebody yeah, wants somebody's dead. But that powder magazine did get attacked. The sand went up in the air, but the building burned to the ground. So that yeah. doesn't work. Yeah. But that sand up there, it's still there. Yeah. It was put there in late 17, like 1708, 1709. I mean, they, they kind of, they, at least they tried, right? <laughs> I guess they had. A... Well, it's still intact. Yeah. It doesn't get hot enough here, and it's not compressed enough to turn to glass. Yeah. So, again, it's still up there. Yeah. They had to do some repairs on that back in the 1990s and seeing yeah. that the sand was still intact. Uh-huh. Man. So, it's a very interesting building. So you can you can go into that building? Yeah, it's a museum now. Okay. Yeah, it's yeah. like five bucks a head. It's beautiful. Okay. So, yeah. Because it's so interesting. All yeah. the, um, the uniforms of the wars that it served in and the artillery is in there. Oh, wow. Yeah, pretty cool stuff. It's like five bucks. Yeah. So if you ever need to get out of the heat or the cold, I yeah. usually recommend just go spend your five bucks and, and yeah. go see something cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Keep getting a lot of Z's here, which is weird. Nothing on here. I don't even have initials for anybody. Not much. <laughs> yeah, I don't expect a whole lot of numbers. That's why I like to use the, the motion sensor. Oh, I ain't, ain't since we reset it, it ain't done nothing really. I mean, yeah, the letters are pretty jumbled here. What do you see when you see that wow? Hmm? I just see bas that? basically just see the wall. And, um, Say that again? I and mean, there's some 
blue areas in there, but nothing. That wall actually belongs to the church. Oh. We're on actually St. Philip's property right now. Power Magazine property doesn't start until you're on the other side of the wall. I need to walk on their side, don't I? Yeah. Right. I call that power line. Pretty much, well, yeah, it's probably only the power line, but you can pretty much ignore your numbers over there. But yeah, if you want to get some footage of the front, you can. That's, that's a good one. That's probably the best one in there. And we had Henry. Yeah, when was Henry? Uh, right as we were getting into the Pinkney Mansion site. Okay. Which, there's a Henry Lauren's Pinkney. We'll get the name Lauren over there all the time, and we all we'll get Henry, Henry along with it. But he's buried on the next cemetery over. Uh -huh. He's a descendant of Eliza, but he started a newspaper called the Mercury. So it sometimes we'll get Mercury on this list along with Henry on another one. Okay. So it's it's interesting. I always look for the secondary clue. Choke. That's a good one. Doc, uh, Big John was shot in the neck. Oh, so he choked. Yeah. But it don't have to be at the site we're at. Sometimes there's a bleed over. So right now I'm not expecting anything from Big John's. We're too far away. Okay. Um, nothing from Lodge Alley. Those things tend to stay in there. But Philadelphia Alley? Yes. But the double eights. I know where they're coming from. Where so going? there's a story behind it. Did they tell you about the, the, uh, the lady with the, the baby across the street on your carriage tour? Was that a history tour or was it just a, was it a ghost tour? No, it was a history tour. Okay, so let's go through that motion and then we'll collect your devices. And, cause that's, that's starting to make sense now. Yeah, right. I hit double eights and I was like, oh. I'm like, I know there's got to be something. When something shows up Kinsley? twice like that. Is that important? Kinsley? That's damn close to the name of the ship. Oh. K I N S L E Y. Kingston. The name of the ship was called the Kingston. Oh, well, I picked up Kingston. That's interesting. Because I don't expect Kingston to show up unless it's a disembodied voice. Because again, the word Kingston is not coming through on a radio station. Yeah. So we have more that we caught tonight than we actually thought. So um, every ghost tour ends across the street. You can cut your video and kind of take a break. Even if you guys want to set your devices down. 